Welcome to the Can of Guns Talk Show, episode 65, In the Eye of the Storm. I am your host, The Grover, and tonight we actually have people. It's fucking weird. I thought we didn't have anybody, and then Adriel was like, oh my god, I gotta take care of my kids, and then a bunch of shit happened, and now everybody's here. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, everybody. Hello, Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. All right. So, so the bearded, actually, everybody's got a beard except me. All right, Chris. <laughs> um, so the guy with the baseball cap is uh, Salish Sailor, and the guy with the headset that probably worth more than my CZ is made pancakes once. Yes. Say hi, Salish. Oh, hi. I'm <laughs> saying it wrong probably, but that's okay because I'm foreign. Um, what we have here tonight is a show packed full of speculation, fear mongering, and your good old fashioned FUD lore. Um, we're just going to talk about whatever we want tonight. Uh, there is not a very set topic. Uh, no lifting. Fuck you. Elixir. <laughs> but what we are going to touch on first is what we've been out to in the last couple of days. Hey, since you guys are new, you guys get to talk about it. Solish Sailor, go. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I have a uh, couple things. First of all, I tested a bunch of uh, surplus ammunition that I bought recently. bought a crate of this uh, 19 or 2003 manufactured, uh, allegedly non-corrosive, 7.62 by 54. Did the nail test. And so far, it's looking a little bit less promising. Um, pretty hard to see on this camera with this lighting, but uh, there's definitely some very light rusting on these nails, even the one that I treated with oil. So I'm going to let those sit a little while and test them against some other modern production ammo to see if it's just, you know, if you heat up a nail with a primer, maybe it rusts a little bit. So I've got to do a comparison there. Otherwise, Try them without uh, the oil, too. Yeah. Well, also, also, oil. also, you should say you have the Victoria affliction. Yes, it's very, very humid here. I know that Adriel, uh, the hunting gear guy, sorry, had uh, tested it, and it looked pretty good in Alberta, but the humidity here is ridiculous, and you leave stuff out for a day, and it rusts even without gross of ammo on it. So, it sure but that being said, I do have a clean nail here, and it's completely uh, nice-looking relative to the... Uh, the one I shot, so mm -hmm. we'll see. Otherwise, yeah, just uh, thinking, went out to the woods yesterday and shot the M44 Mosin, made some big fireballs, and uh, been playing a lot with 22s. I like 22s now, so. Yeah. You've been busy. Yeah, got a bit of free time, a bit of free time this week, so I've been shooting a lot. And testing right stuff. on. Yeah. Uh, made pancakes once. What have you been? Yo. Up to? So I busted out the collection. I don't know how much of it you guys would be wanting to see, but I have. Oh, oh no. Yeah, oh, an SKS yeah. or a Mosin, you can Show us an that. SKS. Garbage rod? Yes, there is well. Garbage rod. <laughs> Old garbage rod. Ugh, garbage rod. Little garbage rod. Ugh. And? Prohibited garbage rod? New garbage rod. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, garbage rod, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, garbage rod. Uh, this is a VZ58, so... Uh, have, yeah. But we'll see what comes next. Dude, we're missing out on the memes. You need to have the Prohib ones. I can bust out my uh, patented floss hair again. <laughs> <laughs> and I have... Uh, looks like old garbage rod, but isn't. Oh, yeah. I would love I have to have an actual one of those. 22 silhouette garbage rod. What gun is that? What scope is that on a 22? What the fuck? <laughs> it's a Crossfire 2, 6 to 18 by 44. Jesus McDicks. I need a parallax adjustment. He has the sunshade on it. so. Yes, that too. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. That's still long. That's excessive for a twenty-two. Fucking. It is never excessive. Zoom. Don't you dare lie. <laughs> I, I've seen this guy shooting silhouette. They shoot tiny, tiny little things at really long distances. It's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm shooting at about a three-inch target at a hundred yards. So, so you awesome. better get good. What's the gap? Down to about forty yards. So I need the parallax adjust. What's the gap? It's a Savage B twenty-two that I oh. got off of the now banned Canada Guns E. Rest in peace. 
there you go. Have you actually shot those? <laughs> I have. Uh, lever action garbage rod. Oh, you've got the actual brand name one. <laughs> See, I have a lever action 12 gauge that I got from Corwin Arms that's branded Warrior. <laughs> Is there's one of the uh, 1887 clones, or nope, it's uh, it's pretty no. much a knockoff of the Adler. Okay. Does it make your knuckles uh, warrior knuckles from uh, beating on the lever trying to open it up? It did for the first few times, and then it softened up. There we go. Well, it's not bad now. And I also find that if I wrap my fingers around the outside of the lever, then that's fine too. So oh. and my finger still reaches the trigger. That's an interesting way. Uh, tactical record on mine. <laughs> tactical lever grip. And I don't know how good it'll be because I haven't tried it yet, but I put an extended choke in it. <laughs> <It's because. laughs> wow. Neat. There's my toil gauge. And then accurate garbage rod. 10 TR. Yep. Oh, that's the one that you're working up that load for, right? Yes, which I had to start over because I got different load data. Well, with why I get it. I got the uh, Hornady reloading manual, and it disagrees with Lee about what the uh, maximum safe load is. Oh, so were you loading the past that? They, uh, I was past Hornady's maximum safe load. That's, Did that's you fine. see any pressure signs? I saw a couple, yeah, which is that's why I bought fine. the manual. That's fine. But what was the pressure sign? Uh, leakage around a couple of the primers. Well, that's fine. Yeah, that's. <laughs> okay. I, I well, don't care yeah, because the first load I tried out of the Hornady manual is getting sub MOA immediately. So. Well, okay. did you check like the powder company's website as well? Uh, I checked the bottle that it came with, but it didn't. Because I, I know like Hodgden's website has a shitload of load data on it. Yeah, it's excellent. Where I get my load data. Same. What kind of uh, bullets are you running out of your 10 TR? Uh, I was using 178 AMAX, but yeah. I switched to 178 uh, ELDX. Long boys. Yeah. Although I want to try some of those 220 grain ELDs. They require a specific, twist, specific rate. twist rate. I remember that yeah, much. Yeah, what's your twist rate? Because that might uh, be It's the one in ten. Oh uh, yeah, it's I think what they require. Yeah. It's probably fine. I, I know my Tika, my Tika's got a stupid twist rate. Like, what uh, the fuck are you doing? I put a <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna catch flat from Elixir. He's the long boy representative. <laughs> I don't like bags, so I put a monopod on it, and I'm gonna try it. Out. That's what your hand is for. <laughs> That's hey Elixir, Elixir, your how much are you gonna read right now? How much do you feel like reading? A lot. <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> no, I, it's too much work to bring it on my ship. <laughs> I could put a sling seen, on it. I have seen his shit. It is a lot of work to bring out. That is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's my the clip. drunkard. The, the drunkard with the fucking guitar hero mic. Go. <laughs> oh, so you've been seeing me drink this. Whatever. Double fisting the mic and the beer. Belgian farmhouse ale. Um, so yeah, I went to uh, I went to TACCOM, which was uh, FOC, decided to host a tactical gun show, basically. And um, the uh, historical society that um, uh, Caliber Magazine gets their guns from was there. Um, and they had the booth right next to the door, so the first thing you see when you step in is a bunch of fucking machine guns just sat on tables. It was fantastic. They had one set up on a bi an MG42 up on a bipod. It was a 308 one, so it probably went to Israel at some point. Um, Ooh, then they had a, weird. had a wall of AKs, a Tommy gun, Uzi. Fucking, it was it was beautiful. I loved it. And then wandering around the rest of the show, obviously the CSSA, CCFR were inside. The NFA had a booth outside. Um, Fuck, who else was there? Remington was there. Mossberg was there. Howa was oh, so there. Before they file for bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's Gravel Agency, the importer. Um, North Silva was there, and that's the first time I think I've ever seen them at a, at a 
trade show or having a booth anywhere and were they, they had, as like, douchey their... to come up on reddit uh, no actually they were personable um answered questions and stuff like that they had the like their whole selection there it was fairly extensive um sig or md charlton rather was there there was a couple of like random turkish gun importers and uh um wolverine supplies was there with a the wk 180c uh, what is... yep nice. yep this was just before they had that other that that fucking nine mil approved so they didn't have that but they had the wk 180c there and i got a chance to hold it and look at it and it's a it's an ar 180 uh, like everything you ex- and stuff on it it lo- i didn't really take like a hugely detailed look at it is the thing but i didn't notice anything oh. glaring is is a thing. Adriel and I Adriel and I have something to say about a certain 180 oh. rifle. Oh, <laughs> uh, but uh yeah, it, it it didn't like there was no glaring thing that I immediately looked and went, "Oh wow, that looks like shit" or anything like that on it. Like it seemed like <laughs> it seemed like pretty much what everyone expects it's going to be. You know, decent 223 non-restricted. Uh the guys from the Howa booth gave me a free hat cuz I walked oh. up and I'm like I walked up and I'm like, I love my fucking how. It's fantastic. I'd buy another in a heartbeat. They're like, we like you. Here, take a hat. <laughs> how jelly? How jelly are you, Elixir? A lot. <laughs> I don't. I don't get free hats. This is bullshit. Uh, there was some dude from like some coating thing there, and I showed him you with your tin foil hat and your disgusting <laughs> leopard gun. <laughs> oh yes. What did he you think? could say I'm something of a social media influencer. <laughs> take a look at the people I uh, hang out with here. <laughs> Uh, he think? wanted to see the abominations you've done. I think I have his business card somewhere lying around the house. I don't fucking remember. <laughs> but uh, you know, when I showed him that, he's just like, "It's I could definitely do something like that. And he just kind of didn't know what to comment about you with the tinfoil hat and the bathrobe. <laughs> you mean uh, to tell me he didn't comment on my sweet Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> nope. He kind of avoided talking about you and was just saying, yeah, that gun's pretty sick. Because they like they had a, I remember they had one gun there. Like they had a bunch of them painted up like army shit and weird colors and gold. And they had one that was like pink stock with some fucking like anime like vinyl on Whoa. the receiver. Whoa. And Hello Kitty and rhinestones on the stock. It was no weave shit. Weave shit is auto ban. <laughs> oh, I actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna bought a Hello rule. Kitty 1022. I'm gonna institute that rule. I'm gonna turn. Uh, Canada guns into a no weep shit mod. Uh, oh, so. No. Yeah. Uh, and then I went and shot my 22 again because uh, whatever. I have a bucket of bullets and my SIG doesn't like that with the 22 kit. This bucket of bullets is particularly shit. This bucket is even shittier than the 525 packs. Whoa, 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 sir. Axe and proof. Axe and proof. Right off. now. Right now. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Don't point Fuck that you at if us. you think I'm examining the bore. <laughs> Point it at your face. No. Yes, Fuck yourself. I can you see through the camera. It's that's a kill here. shot. That's a kill shot. <laughs> Failed to see. <laughs> Failed to see RFC. Uh. Anyway, yeah, I shot my twenty-two, and it is actually so fucking filthy that I. It's normally I have it like on a rest. I was holding it this time, right up around the magwell, because I was using the extended mags. And uh, one of them's cracked, and I need to try and JB weld it back together for another little while of function. You don't need JB weld. You need need SpongeBob tape. Nothing's going to really help, I don't think. But uh, it was actually getting carbon on my hand near the mag well from all the shit coming out of it. It is that fucking dirty in there. Remington bucket of bullets, folks. I don't think it was the gun. No, no, no. no. I haven't cleaned it. It was the ammo. I hate Remington bucket of bullets. It's trash. It is, but my gun will shoot anything except Winchester Wildcat. It will not shoot that. That is the worst ammo I yep, ever played with. Absolutely, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty hilarious. As I'm shooting, and I look at my hand and going, "Why is my hand black?" But it was sitting near the mag well. But uh, yeah, and so there was that. Um, uh, what else did I shoot? I still haven't shot my revolver since I put the original grip back on it, and I might not even bother. I might go look for like a Hogue grip, because I really like the grips on the GP100. Like I really like the way they felt when I had one, 
And I really, it's, I'm not a fan of the rubber grip that comes with the Smith and Wesson. So I, I asked the North Silver rep actually, like, do you know of any grips for a Smith that are like a GP100? And he said, look at if Hogue has anything. So that's I, a Hogue grip. The, the GP100 grip was a Hogue grip. Oh, uh, is it actually a Hogue grip? Adriel, you still have one. No, he sold nope. his. Oh, you sold it already? <laughs> Fuck. Come on, man. I don't keep stuff that long. Jeez, you clearly didn't like watch the show last week. Already. No, I didn't watch the show. Well, it happened at what fucking like eleven o'clock at night. I was asleep. Yeah, it was then. a late one. Anyway, other than that, I haven't really done a huge amount. Okay, it's pretty much that. I'm gonna go really quickly and uh, and point out that uh, Elixir probably has done shit all. Elixir, have you done shit all? I went to the gun show. Oh, well, yeah, tell that's... us about your gun show experience. Oh. <laughs> How much beef jerky did you buy? None, because it was Calgary, and th there's no fucking beef jerky. It's always a disappointment. Uh, I it, am sorry. I went cruising through there and didn't see shit all really worth anything, except for the company that makes their own pelican cases, whatever. Oh, uh, Canuck is it, or what is it? Canuck. Canuck. I don't yeah. know. Whatever, but they had their their full size fifty two inch inner diameter for like two hundred sixty four, which was actually a really good deal. But you know, I'm not building another gun anytime soon. So, what did you think? Is it closed cell phone? No idea. No, because that'd be like the one thing. If it's a fucking open fucking cell phone, then whatever. That's trash. I don't care how good your case is if it's gonna rust my gun. Yeah, but it, it looked nice. But beyond that. Didn't really see much. I was looking for brass more than anything and didn't find yeah, that. Yeah, Adriel and I didn't see any brass. Nope. Oh, well. Saw we. Well, I, I did see the, the Spud 180, whatever the fuck they're calling it. Dear what God. Is the, Adriel, do you remember the name of that thing? What's the name of that thing supposed to be? Uh, it's the RWA Nodak uh, 180. Oh, is this the one that RWA Ireland guns is bringing in? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, no, they're they're bringing in the lowers. The lowers are Nodax, and then the uppers are made by Range Warrior Accessories RWA out of Canada. Calgary? Well, I think Calgary. I have no idea. Uh, but R, 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 RWA should just stop. Yeah, that's. Well, well, let's get three people's opinions on this. Elixir, what did you think of the RWA 180? I honestly think that it looks like fucking garbage. <laughs> yeah. So what's specific what design features make it look like garbage or, or what's what's causing the issue? Because you have to like you have to take it down to a either design or look or something specific. <laughs> you fucking seen it too, man. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh well, Angel and I have very interesting opinions about it. Um what do you think, though? Like, wh what rubs you the wrong way? The fact that it's basically fucking clamped in there. <laughs> What's like, clamped in there? The barrel into the goddamn oh. upper. <laughs> yeah. Like, did, did someone figure out that dies were too fucking costly and just said, ah, fuck it. We'll just machine a couple <laughs> clamps onto it. I mean, I've seen worse. If you looked at how the barrel of the scorpion is in place, it's it's a pin. Well, isn't it pressed into it, too? Kind of, yeah. And the right. receiver's made out of stamped sheet steel. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like 38 uh, auto or whatever, right? Like 32. 30, yeah, 32 auto. Tiny little, you know. It's in 32, fuck the government. <laughs> You'd, uh... Cool. You'd have trouble, you know, hurting a squirrel with that stuff. <laughs> One shot at a time. Uh, there, we had an old Czech guy who used to be a gunsmith where I used to work, and uh, he told us stories of when he was in the Czech military, and he went partridge hunting with a scorpion. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Did he get any? That'd be neat. Yeah. If they would yeah. just be bored, they'd see some around the side of the fucking road when they'd be out, and so like, all right, boom, 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 start popping them off. Nice. Mm. This guy also went gopher hunting with a Lewis machine gun mounted on the back of a Jeep once. What? They, he, he used Absolutely. to own a lot of shit before it all got banned. 
So he did some very interesting things back when you still could. Uh, is that is that where you like you know hunt the gophers by basically turning their their burrows into craters? Like, I mean, how else do you hunt gophers? <laughs> I, I've heard of that. I've heard of concrete, and I've heard of dynamite. So, yeah. Just put your uh, M44 barrel at the hole, and boom, and then you'll see the shockwave push them out a different one. Yeah, that's no joke. I mean, I, I was filming myself shooting it the other day, and uh, the phone was shaking with every shot. So, and it was it was like ten feet away. Hey, Adriel, what did you do in the last two weeks? Ah, a couple things. I uh, went to some gun show with a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> down in Calgary. That was kind of fun. No, I uh, I drove down okay, Thursday night I would have like done did the uh slam fire show. Uh uh quickly headed down to uh Calgary that night and then Friday morning uh Crover and I went to uh, uh the Calgary gun show. Uh it's kind of cool. Uh, uh there was a question on the uh YouTube channel uh the differences between the RWA 180 and the uh, WK-180. So the RWA uses uh, open sides with these steel uh, panels that you screw into uh, to both the sides. And that allows them to go with a left or right ejection and left or right charging handle. Uh, so you can choose which one. So that's that's one major difference. Uh, whereas Wolverine's going with one where it's like, uh, it's ejecting out the right, deal with it, and the bolt handle will go on the left or right hand side. And there's going to be a slot on the left hand side, and also deal with it. But uh, personally, I kind of I kind of like Wolverine's approach because what they also did with the deal with it uh, uh, philosophy is they made it a lot cheaper. Uh, we're going to come in at right around a thousand dollars Canadian, uh, whereas the um, the RWA one once you once you've like outfitted it is coming in at seventeen eighteen hundred bucks kind of thing. So oh, you guys have just been saying it's a pile of shit. <laughs> Well, th like that no, panel no, no, thing no, no, no. Hold is, is not really Hold confidence inspiring. Now it also they also come with a bolt release, and the uh, Wolverine one doesn't come with a bolt release. So yeah. they've been adding things on. They've been opting for more engineering, and and uh, I think the Wolverine one is just more a more pragmatic kind of a, the whole a point of having a charging handle on it like that is you're not supposed to use a bolt release. You pull back on the charging handle. That's well, especially if, if it's on the left hand side. So if, if I'm charging a gun and uh, and I'm like, let's just pretend this is a rifle. I pop my magazine in. I can reach up and, and uh, click the uh, charging handle back and go. Um, whereas like on an AR-15, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you got to go to the back to the back. So a, a bolt release is a little bit uh, nicer. And the bolt release that they're putting on that RWA is also thumb accessible. So you, you slap your magazine in and... Hit it, hit it right there, and it's not uh, like a bad lever on an AR-15 where you're going to be using your, tr your your trigger finger and you might slip and get an ND. Uh, no, so but Adriel, the, yeah. Did you did you talk about the difference in the barrel attachment? Yeah, the so the 180, um, you just the the Wolverine one, you just screw it on like every other AR. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an air it's an AR metal. barrel nut. Yeah, it's any yes. AR barrel nut, and any AR yeah. barrel. Yes, and uh, it costs actually no, less. not any AR barrel. Not any. There's uh, the other difference it's between like... the WK and the RWK. Whatever, what the fuck? The other one, the Iron Guns one, is uh, the the Wolverine one is going to have a mid link gas system only, whereas the uh, Iron Guns is going to have a rifle link gas system. Yeah, uh, they're both still obviously um, piston driven guns. Yeah. And oh my uh, god, I, holy fuck, they're machining on it. They're machining on it, man. That this that piston thing uh turns me on because I love the SBT and it looks so much like the SBT that I, I want one. Just oh, give yeah. it WK. There is absolutely no reason to go with the uh, with the iron guns one, I think. Yeah. I don't I don't care about the uh, about the uh bolt release, sorry, Adrian, but Oh, I don't yeah. either. I'm just I'm I'm giving the differences, right? They're they're two different design approaches. Yeah. Um I think the WK is a more pra like pragmatic design. It's it's designed for uh, a price point and they they made choices for you and they didn't add the flexibility in there. And I'm okay with that. Uh let's see. That was at the gun show. 
They also had that. What was that nine millimeter? FN nine. FX nine. FX nine. FX nine. Ooh, see, ooh, they didn't ooh, have ooh. that one at Tatcom, and when, when I saw about it like two days later, I'm like, oh fuck. I oh, it's so thing. good. Oh, I think it's it looks so fucking slick. good. It looks slick. It looks slick. The magazine releases in the right spot. It felt so nice and compact. They shaved off a ton off the receiver, so it's a, it's a, it's quite a bit more compact than than an AR fifteen, and uh, oh, so good, so good. It really does look like an AR-15 had sex with like a TNA uh, just right or whatever the hell they do. Which, which one is the just right carbine? carbine. And, then the, and then the arrow, TNA arrow? TNW arrow. Yeah. yeah. It literally looks like those three guns had an orgy and then that popped out. And it just right. The the, the genes were just right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it uses Glock mags. Looked good. The release is in the right spot. It, the the release was ambi. It's just they, they did a lot of the right kind of stuff with that thing. Um, it, in the states, it's a really low priced gun. I think it was like five four hundred in the U.S. kind of a thing. So they are selling them at a premium here. For our market, they're actually like very competitive at eight nine hundred bucks, something like that. Yep. Uh, That's what yeah. all the other PPC, PCCs are. No, PPCs. they're all around eleven now, except the Keltec. The Keltec's the only one still under a thousand. No mm. shit. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, can you can you take down the uh, the FX or whatever it is the the, the new one? It takes are down like an AR, or? if I'm not mistaken, with two pins and then pops the uh, top off. Okay. So you can you can compact it down if you want to, just by pulling off the lower and packing it in the pins or whatever. Oh, that'd be a good point. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. true. So they're actually. gonna they're gonna bring those in non restricted length, and uh, I don't think they had plans for bringing restricted length uh, barrels on them. Long boy uh, barrel. Yeah, long, long boy, boy barrel. But no, that's what you want, anyways. For for Canada, you want a non restricted. Right? I mean, the only other thing you would want is like a ten inch barrel, just to piss off all the Americans who can't have it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And then they won't make them, so you know. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I sold my uh, FNS and I sold my GP100. Oh uh, no! I didn't know you sold the FNS. You were holding onto that for so long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's been a year and a half. I want to say. Yeah, you. Oof, that's a long time in my safe. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gone. Sold it. Uh, I sold my extra mags and now I have two holsters for it that I don't really need that are just sitting in my gun safe. So don't worry, do you have an F and S holsters for guns that they don't have anymore? Yeah. Well, I I want to get some extra holsters for maybe one of these. I don't know. I got a, a shadow one. And uh, I was looking around my house and I could not find any soy. I wanted to like drinking soy as well, but uh, no luck. Um, Adriel, quick question. Uh, you were yeah. talking to me about your Mac. Can you show me how your Mac works? Because I'm having difficulties with my Oh, yeah. So I want to show you guys something with uh, – and, and I've already modded this one. Uh, so pop your magazine into your uh, SPO one Hold the magazine in. Now depress the magazine release as far as it will go and see if the magazine comes out. Now they won't just by default because what they'll do is they'll over uh, push in, into the, uh, the other side and it will catch on the magazine – um, but I've modded this one, so even while I've got the uh, mag release pushed as far as it'll go in, that mag is still loose. Now the advantage there is if you're uh, you're in a match and you're going He-Man push on the the magazine release, uh, it won't catch the mag. Hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I have this issue. Like I keep pressing the mag, yeah, but I don't know why my fucking magazine won't come out. It's it's oh oh there it is that's why. <laughs> well, that's a different problem entirely. Brian Barr Look, Barr Barr. Said. I, the preparation that I took to make that joke was far too long. <laughs> Should be like a, a soy bar. Or something. Mm, yummy. Mm, fuck yeah, Snickers. Mm. All right. Like that, like a new factory. <laughs> mm. uh, let's see here. Yeah, I bought a Shadow One. Uh, Interesting things about it, the tri stick, uh, it's nice and heavy. It may make me get a Shadow 2. Might, I don't know, sell just the gun and, and then buy a Shadow 2. I don't know. I don't know yet. The grip's a bit smaller than my uh, my giant Glock 17 grip now, so that's a little bit different. But, man, the trigger is just phenomenal. 
Mm. And the weight is excellent, too. You need to get yourself a pair of these. Mm, aluminum grips, hey? Probably not. I'll probably go for uh, nasty uh, silicon carbide like I put on everything these days. Disgusting. Disgusting. There is the glittery silicone carbide on A5. This is using green silicone carbide, which is supposed to be harder and better, but uh, I don't know. Oh, for a shotgun, it probably doesn't matter. It's very grippy now. I was actually having some issues with this one. I, I was watching my last match, and I could see the forend just hopping around quite a bit in my hand, and uh, now it won't <laughs> because that hand has got it like a nice, a nice gripping surface there with uh, with this basically like sandpaper. Uh, that's on here now. Everything. Yeah, nice, nice kind of my touch. You smooth out your calluses and stuff too. Nice and, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Nice, yeah nice it it definitely hand. smooths out your hand. Now, every time I touch it, it, I feel like some's coming off in my hand. But then I look and it's actually skin. It's actually like <laughs> sloughing off skin on my hand. <laughs> so, baby uh, things. You know what? It like after a match, my hands look like kind of white and chalky, and it's all these like little micro scratches in my hand afterwards. Uh, but uh, it's good for the match, so heck with it, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was able to come out tonight. I actually, uh, <laughs> I was like double booked, and I got my, yeah. I dropped my wife off with the kids, and I got to go pick them up in half an hour here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, managed managed to just squeeze it in. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Ah, should I should yes. I get a Shadow Two and then do a 1911 versus Shadow Two versus Glock? For three gun head to head, do it. Yes. Yeah. Do it. Then start to should. hate your nineteen eleven and sell it to that lighting guy. He wants one. So the interesting thing about that nineteen eleven, uh, the sights that are on it uh, aren't matched. So I I screw the rear sight as low as it'll go. It's still shooting like three feet high at fifty yards. So I need to change the sights on it, and I won't sell it until it's uh, until it's running properly. Okay. Well, he'll buy it off you. <laughs> Guaranteed. Uh, it's bespoke and it's custom and famous by now. I got some really pissed off is... people messaging me on CGN. Are you I getting? Think any I, more uh, of those? I mentioned them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On Facebook too. I don't know if they're in on the joke and they're like they're playing off of it. Uh, because that's that's possible. Uh, what was the last reply that I got here? Yeah, there was that one. There's that guy saying, I'll take it at that price if it's available. And I think he's full of shit. You should go uh, for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remember, yeah remember, <laughs> remember, if you sell it for that much, I'll match however much it costs you to get a fucking KSG 25. I got a regular KSG in the safe. I know. Uh, Twenty five. Yeah. You need the one with Anyways, the extra that's, chromo- uh, No, no, Adriel, you need the one with the extra chromosome. The extra chromosome. <laughs> yeah, I, I need the one with the extra short mag tube and the extra barrel, just because that makes any fucking sense in Canada, right? Oh yeah, we if saw one of that one, right? That no. weird fucking one. It's, it's rather than like, oh, you don't want extra sh- uh, shot shell capacity, right? Re- but you still want the same overall length, right? <laughs> And you want to pay more? Okay, we got you. <laughs> For you. <laughs> yeah. Shadow two. Do they? Do they come in stainless? Are they a lot more in stainless? They look like the regular. The going rate is eleven ninety nine for a blued one. But fucking everything rusts if you abuse it and never clean it. So I kind of want something that's stainless. You guys have any idea? Scrub it with sandpaper. Well, no, you put you glue the sandpaper to it, and then you have the sandpaper like ready to rock and roll on that motherfucker. <laughs> well, all right. Anyways, yeah. that's it for me. Who's up next on the list? That would be the Crover, I do believe. The Crover uh, is uh, locked and uh, not with us. Uh, sorry, someone had a question there. Oh, you know, later. Okay. Uh, the Crover is still frozen. Uh, his laptop was having some issues. Let's see. Uh, yeah, CZ Shadow 2 blue-black, so like with these blue grips and uh, black 
everything else is eleven ninety nine. Ah, oh, they're so good. I was listening to uh, uh, the Practical Pistol Shooting podcast today, and apparently the uh, Ten Folio and Shadow Two are about the same price in uh, in the states. So, like, we're getting hosed for the t- the the price of the Ten Folios here in Canada because they're right. an kind of thing. I know what I was thinking about. Um, do you remember, Adriel, or anybody, who it was who was once talking about doing some kind of Milser three-gun deal? Well, I was going to do the uh, like a historical two-gun match. Uh, I, I'm doing a historical two-gun match at my club where yeah. you you can run a an older uh, semi-auto or bolt-action rifle and an older pistol. Okay. I think oh, that's a cool set. idea. Uh, you... I, it's super easy to set up. You need cardboard targets and a range. I mean, I don't, I don't know what range you've got near you, but uh, not a lot of setup. It's actually, I, I think it's going to be really easy and uh, easy to get a whole bunch of people out to uh, uh, to shoot at it. Yeah. I'm down. I'm ready to drive out. Got my, uh, got my M91 here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, is it an M9130 or is it an M91? No, it's an M91. Yeah. Oh. Original. It's finished. Ah. So the I mean, older it is, the more points you get, right? Yeah. 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 I'm making it so that, that like that's that's gonna be the the motivator is to use the oldest design possible. Um <laughs> someone comes oh, out with a brown a, best musket. How about a spider <laughs> with printed uh, 3D printed cases? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Can I show up with a spider and a shorter spear? I mean, I guess you're not. You're gonna have your time's gonna fucking suck, though. Yeah, but I have the best or the oldest design. Sure. I don't know. Like, you still have to shoot the match. Spirit, but yes. Mm. Yeah. Spirit. I mean, I think I've been considering putting in like a uh, a bayonet target uh, because a lot of guys' guns will have bayonets, so it's always nice That's to cool. have those. That's one thing I miss at the range, like going to the rifle range with one of these old guns. You've got a bayonet on it and you're shooting. And you can't even run up in a ceasefire and stab your target because <laughs> you can't handle your gun. I mean, you have to go out in the woods to, have, to enjoy your bayonet. You well, just can't. You just go the to the range when it's, you know, empty and it's fine. Just I, put a target at one yard and then bayonet it from the firing line. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wonder about that. What's the minimum distance for a paper target? There, there I don't think there is one, is it there? It goes and depends on the range rules. Yeah, I don't for think there's one at our there is, no. Like we've got rules. Limit. We've got rules for general shooting where you for shooting steel targets you have to use lead ammo, you know, within 100 yards or whatever. Common sense safety stuff like that. But never heard anything about like you can't set a target one yard away from me or anything like that. So well, just bring some watermelons. <laughs> I don't think they allow anything besides paper or steel at our range. Yeah, yeah paper and steel. No, no, uh, no, nothing else but paper and steel. You have yeah, no video so here. anymore, Crover. You've turned green. <laughs> can you hear me? They can hear yes. you. You're hey, that's fine. Our so over here from the Vic range. You're not allowed to shoot anything but paper and steel. Yep. How about a plastic uh, self-healing target with 22? What about a steel watermelon? If you can find one, go for it. Just make sure <laughs> that it's angling the right way not to give every million fucking ricochets. Which is round, so good luck with that one. Exactly. It's fine. It's fine. Grover, we're at you. Uh, lock it onto me. Uh, or not, because I'm just nothing. Who cares? <laughs> uh, I have very little to report. I went to the Calgary Gun Show, and I hung out with this bald guy. He was really funny. Um, then I saw a really terrible-looking gun. That was modeled after the WK-180. Oh, wait a minute. The IR-180. Um, let, me, let me just give you my honest opinion on it. It's over-engineered. It's over-engineered to shit. It should not be... Just, just a second. Which one are you talking about? The WK or the other one? The, the other one. one. Okay. No, the, the WK is great. It's just... They, they just updated it. They put a Picatinny rail on top, and they moved up the gas system a little bit so that you could... Uh, so you could Run just fucking... Barrel. Put an air barrel in there. That's it. That's exactly what it should have been. I don't know why. I like that clamp-on system. It literally is four bolts holding onto 
the barrel. The uh, clamp. Why? Why? He okay. must be a really big fan of clamp on muzzle brakes. Maybe. Maybe. Angel, you had a clamp on muzzle brake on your fucking Mosin ones, didn't you? Yep. I had one on my SKS too, like a million years ago. That's now they're shot off. But well, shot if it's off, good uh, enough for if it's good enough for a muzzle brake, it's good enough for a whole barrel. Well, so in an AR-15, the, the barrel doesn't hold any of the pressure, right? The uh, uh, the locking lugs go into the barrel extension and lock up. So I guess it's not taking that much pressure, I think. That doesn't mean I have to like it. No, you don't. Actually, and no, it is. Because the fucking the, uh, uh, recoil, the, the uh, uh, op rod, is slamming. Uh, bolt, and if I guess it, ah, it's that's that doesn't matter either. No, it's not that much pressure that it's handling. But you'd have some, you'd have some tolerance in there. You'd have to have a little bit of slop, right? Or is it, is it just so secure that you're? That's not an issue. Like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's still early on too, so it's hard to like, say. I it looks like shit. I wouldn't be worried about the safety, but just is it going to be accurate, or is there going to be a little bit of movement yeah. in there, or whatever? It's already it in looks. AR. It looks like shit. <laughs> that's I think that's where we where we want to uh, finish that particular discussion. It looks like shit. Yep. That's all I need to hear. Yeah. Um. Other than that, um, I'm decapping a shitload of these fucking 308s because I finally got more bullets from Calgary, of course, because I'm not about to pay for shipping on fucking a big box of heavy lead. Um, Why not? And I'm gonna. Go from, uh, ac I mean, uh, uh, charge testing to seating depth testing on my 308. So I'm gonna use the absolute cheapest projectiles I can find, the Campros, and I'm gonna try my hardest to make it the most accurate possible load. Uh, I did some insane levels of testing, uh, down to 0.1 grain increments and 10 shot groups instead of what everybody told me is just fucking ballpark it in like three or four, <laughs> like 0.3 or four, and just do like. Five shot groups, like no, fuck that. I'm going all out. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> going all out just this once, <laughs> master. <laughs> oh, they only have 147 grain. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I know they only have 147 grain, but hey, you could just like epoxy some extra lead to the bottom of the bullet, right? That works. Oh man, so the CZ Shadow Two, even that urban gray one, it's still steel. It's just they they put a knit ride finish on the whole fucking thing. Do you want a fucking aluminum lower? What the hell are you looking for? Well, I thought they had a stainless one, but I guess it was just like a finish. Just the finish they put on top. Well, they have the PO7, which is the same thing but polymer. It's not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> he said in his soy is the boy is ways. <laughs> <laughs> the PO7 is the same thing as a shadow. Bite your it's basically tongue. the same thing. That's CZ on the side, right? The same the thing. CZ 9mm. Well, what more do you want to know? <laughs> well, let's go in here and come out there. What more do you need? Tide goes in, tie goes out. Can't explain that. <laughs> Papa Bear O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have this gun pre-order. I don't know if you guys know about it. Um, it's called the SLR. It's, <laughs> it's going to revolutionize the market, folks. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to like change the world of Canadian gun owners. Um, Whenever well, actually, it comes out. It, 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 it was going to change the world of gun owners uh, last month, uh, but it was delayed. Then it was going to change the world of gun owners in Canada this month, but it was delayed again. Now, it's going to change the world of Canadian gun owners in uh, May? Maybe? I heard June. I heard May. That's what end the email May. from end of, end of May is is, is what that's the, what the email from True North Arms said May. So it may so come out soon. It may come out. It may come out. There is no there is no way to know for sure. Let me so try I have and a joint. I have a little bit of an announcement here. I actually have an SLR receiver right here. What? Uh, and you don't even need you don't even need a license for it. This is this is it. It's in this box. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hmm. 
Uh, I hope I hope it gets out. I hope I hope they produce it. it, it it's a I, great I, I idea. So. It's a great idea, and a lot of people have bought into it. And I, I hope it gets done soon, and they just get it out. I hope it gets done soon, considering I bought a significant amount of parts and tools to put it together all by myself, like a big boy. Yeah. How about you, Adrian? What's your take on this? On what? Oh, did you hear about um, ATRS is going to get out? Now, this isn't the modern Varminter. It's a modern Sporter. So they have their own upper and lower that they're going to be putting onto the market. And they got word from the RCMP that their FRT is coming in 120 days. So four months okay, away. How much is the price point, though? Yeah, is that's what we all care about. Was, was it cost? Uh, I thought it's that one was to be. Right. I thought that one was $1,000. Because this is ATRS. It's going to be your firstborn child or your wife, depending on which one's hotter. No, I, I'm pretty sure it was a thousand bucks for the upper and lower, which is the same as the uh, Maccabee. Um, yeah, for just an upper and lower. Just an upper and lower. Yeah, WK one eighty C. But like by the time they get out onto the market, uh, there might be some other uh, competitors that make that force their price point to you know drop a bit. I hope so. Maybe NEA will come up with something. I mean, I mean they if, can't if, screw it up too bad if it's just an upper and lower, right? <laughs> yeah. If, if they couldn't, uh, if they couldn't demand a premium, they may not like. We may not have Canadians, uh, Canadian manufacturers making this kind of stuff, right? So, I'd rather uh, a couple of them make it and make some good money, and then more make it and more make it, and then they drive down the price. Then no one makes it. Like, how long? How long was this like this? Fucking years. And all, all we had was military grade guns that shot military grade accuracy uh for you know for the last 10 20 years right we haven't had any like fantastic uh non-restricted uh, semi-auto rifles so if they're all competing and they're all charging outrageous prices and they're you know we get a little price war going fuck yeah hook me up the thing yeah. that I find the most interesting about all this is that West is that a uh, Wolverine is making theirs at a thousand dollars. Yeah, but I think the issue with that is that that Kodiak, who's making them, I think it's Kodiak, has experience doing this. They've got the eight five eight. They've got some SKS stuff they've been doing. Like they don't have the same kind of startup to get all the machinery in place to do it. They've already. Neither does ATRS. Wait, no, I, I, ATRS makes guns already. Exactly, yes. so there shouldn't be the same price as the Maccabee. Like, I understand Maccabee is not really a fucking company, so they got all the startup costs and shit, but ATRS has a full fucking production facility. They shouldn't be charging $1,000 because it's of Bucci ATRS. startup costs. It, that's, it's literally it. That's yeah, their know, fucking label. Cool. Here is four it's grand for same, a fucking AR. It's the that same fucking thing. Shit all for it's M. the same thing as paying the pony tax for a cold blower. The same thing. You're paying for the roll mark. Well, and the you know QC and whatever else they put into it, right? Oh come on, it's a it's a lower. I've seen those things being made out of fucking pop cans. <laughs> you okay, also so would you rather have an, an NEA lower or would you rather have an ATRS lower? I would rather have an Aero lower. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like you know. If, if Arrow makes a, a non-restricted uh, rifle for the for the Canadian market, let me know. <laughs> I'll buy one of those. I think I think everybody would buy one of those. Even I'd probably buy one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what money. Uh, I can pay with. Where are we at? Um. What we at is that. Uh, Hey, Crazy, are you up to date with all the shenanigans regarding BLC-71? Okay, probably. Give it your burst shot, and then I'll step in if there's something. Oh, about else. summarizing what exactly on this, Bill? Where do you want me to start, from the beginning or from No, the no, we already know. It got right into Parliament. Everybody freaked out. There's the petition, 60,000 signatures, and then what? So, obviously, Justin Trudeau and Ralph Goodale and every single other liberal have been lying on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere about this bill, trying to claim it doesn't do shit that it does or that it addresses problems that it doesn't. Uh, after the introduction of Bill C-71, they introduced Bill C-75, which actually rolls back convictions 
on criminals who smuggle firearms and who are members of gangs. So not only are the liberals deliberately targeting gun owners under the guise of stopping cri stopping crime, they are actually rolling back punishments for real fucking criminals. So that's going on. Um, fucking yeah, that's as far as I know is that they just keep lying on Facebook and Twitter, and everyone on the CCFR Facebook page goes, "Let's shit all over them for this." They're a bunch of lying dicks. And they keep emailing, everyone keeps emailing their MPs and their senators and whatever, and every conservative MP has already said, fuck this bill, and every liberal MP just sends out a form letter with talking points. And the liberals are starting to attack the conservatives by saying, oh, Andrew Scheer is playing the NRA and murdering children and stupid shit like that. Well, the CCFR yeah. is the NRA of Canada, isn't it? That's yes, right. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the real kicker, folks. Uh, according to Justin Trudeau's campaign uh, funding uh, request, we must donate to the Liberal Party of Canada because the Canadian NFA, the CCFR, is subject to great, I don't know, coverage and... They're lying to the Canadian public, and they're gonna start selling babies out on the streets and what else? I don't well, know. also, like I'm, I'm not sure if you heard, but they're also <laughs> rabid. Oh, oh yes, oh yeah. I like that line. And yet, when people say rabidly anti-gun, it's laughed at or ridiculed. Well, no, that's just what happens when they pull you pull down your pants. Hmm. <laughs> I guess we're all just too privileged. Well, we are all male. Not most of us are white. Sorry. Tec technically, <laughs> it is a privilege to have a license here. So privileged as fuck. <laughs> I should get it engraved in the side of like the the ejection port of my AR upper. <laughs> because because you <laughs> because you took a test, got licensed, renew every five years, and are a law abiding citizen. You're privileged. Holy uh. shit, Adriel! You need to buy that. Oh man, yeah. Even the new ones are eleven ninety nine. Yep. I mean, it yeah. comes with the mags. We're looking at Shadow Twos. That's the only Shadow Two on sale on the EE right now. I think those ones move quickly. I don't see those sticking around very long. Nah. The Ipsic guys like fucking love that shit. Buy it. Buy it now. No, uh, I have to sell this one first. <laughs> Didn't you just buy it? <laughs> Have you ever tried yeah. it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't got the registration certificate for it. But, uh, but it's already listed know. on the EE. <laughs> I don't need to list shit on the EE. People know. Solid bespoke. Ask for $1,000 over the, over the MSRP and you're good to go. You want to, you want to trade for an M91? <laughs> yeah! That's a good trade right there. How, how about a PZ58? <laughs> oh, there's the hey. prohibited one. No, no. It's oh, is that still good. not? What is yours too old? The CSA. Oh, uh, fuck off, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> so salty. Yeah. So salty. Uh, I guess that's kind of it, really. I mean, we can take a look at the uh, post of uh, the, the post. Uh, there's this one post that I do want to bring up. It's, I mean, uh, it's quite concerning. Shit posts. It's quite concerning. Yes, I know. There's been quite a lot of shit posts, and, and frankly, this one is the most deplorable of them all. I don't know if you saw it. It just came up this afternoon. It's fucking obscene. Will yeah, you look it's at your that? Fucking toes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. how long ago was the last time you owned a 1022? Uh, I I haven't owned a 1022 in probably like two years. <laughs> Why are you zooming in on your toes? I'm not zooming in on my toes. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's my toe. Oh, that's nasty. What the fuck? Those are good looking toes. <laughs> Tommy looks crap, like right down the middle there, man. The top comment, too. Oh, my God. That was good. Oh, shit. I guess you guys can see the... Uh... The reports and shit. Ignore reports. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's look at some of your reports. That, that sounds like a good time. Uh, it's a lot of this. 
This is this this user is persecuting me. No, you're a racist fuck. Get the fuck out of our sub. <laughs> hey, how many times is, have our favorite people been reported? Like uh, the Tyler and, <laughs> and that other kid. <laughs> I haven't. Oh, seen, I'm pretty I haven't sure seen Tyler report. is reported for every single post. Uh, I could. I could just go ahead and start doing that. You know, just reporting manually. Oh, we did have this guy that made a really nice infographic. Yep. And Apparently then people. He posted on our data is beautiful and our Canada and got accused of uh, pushing an agenda, which he is. Yeah. Look at where he it is. came from. Yeah. He's pushing the wrong <laughs> agenda. <laughs> that yeah, was the real the, issue. Yeah, it, it's, it's the gay weird. agenda. <laughs> it's well, fine for guns. He pushes an agenda, but God forbid you push the other agenda. It's making frogs gay. <laughs> I don't want no gay frogs. Man, you can do seventy seventy six again. <laughs> Why am I presenting to everyone? Adrian, because you wanted to. I don't know. Unpresenting. <laughs> Uh, you know, even finish scrolling off. through the I'm top post. Okay, okay, you're not. Okay, fine. Thank you. Now you, now you want oh, to. Oh, for God's sakes! Stop! Stop! <laughs> there goes Grover again. Always presenting. <laughs> <laughs> what are you presenting uh, as, Grover? He's a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an Apache? <laughs> presenting I as an Apache. Oh, I, I do. I do identify as a uh, as an attack of a copy. There we go. You should do that if the census comes by and they ask you to identify as like something else, other attack helicopter. Please don't tap me. I have thought about it. <laughs> There's Sweet. I, I had no idea I had this much fucking brass to decap. I don't know how many how many I'm doing I'm done so far. Seventy two. I still haven't bothered to go and force that reloading press over there. <laughs> Wrong with Let's it. See. The wood uh, that it's Let's attached see. to is split, and I can't be bothered to go and change the wood. There, there's a, there's the bag of brass that I already clear. There's some that I clear already. I'm still got to do those. Those two Activia bins are full of brass too, and uh, there's a shitload of primers right there. Lots. You should eat some Greek uh, yogurt instead. Which yogurt should I eat? Greek yogurt. Why do people keep suggesting I eat Greek yogurt? What's so good it's about better. it? It's better. Tastes better. <laughs> they they have better Fake ads news. on the television. Fake news. Fake news. You don't remember it's... the one where the dude kisses the horse? What? I don't know what kind of shit you're looking at, man. For <laughs> Add for Greek yogurt. It's right. gonna go. Uh -huh. Are we gonna be talking about horse yogurt in a second? Can you milk a horse? <laughs> what about magical unicorn mayonnaise? <laughs> no, no, Eric, no, Elixir, we are not milking a horse. No, can it's you? It's getting dark. <laughs> Gotta go to the no, after show. It's, it's getting real dark around here. <laughs> yeah, it's after show time. Pull it. Pull it, Angel. <laughs> uh, after the after show. Hold on.